today we have the opportunity to engage our local representatives in a dialogue surrounding the New York State budget for 2021-22. We're thankful to both Senator Akshar and Senator Overacker for taking the time to listen to our Racker community as they navigate one of the most difficult budget seasons on record. First, allow me to introduce Senator Fred Akshar of the 52nd District. Senator Akshar has dedicated his career to serving and protecting the citizens of our community. He spent 15 years with local law enforcement, two years with the Shenango County Sheriff's Office and 13 with the Broome County Sheriff's Office. Senator Akshar's law enforcement experience touched on every level of the Sheriff's Office operations and provided him with an intimate knowledge of the concerns of the people and communities across the entire region. He's a graduate of the FBI Academy and uh, Broome Community College. And he rose rapidly through the Sheriff's Office ranks, ultimately rising to the rank of Under Sheriff. Senator Akshar, on a more personal basis, has been a friend and a champion for children with, uh, and adults with disabilities in our community. He brings passion and leadership to the fight for a living wage for direct support professionals. Senator Akshar serves as a ranking member on both the Crime Victims, Crime and Corrections and Civil Service and Pensions Committees. He also serves on the Disabilities, Alcoholism and Substance Abuse, Codes and Labor Committees. You're busy. Welcome Senator Akshar. Next, please let me introduce Senator Peter Overacker of the 51st District. Senator Overacker is serving his first term representing the, first, the 51st Senate District. Prior to his election to the State Senate, Senator Overacker served as a member of the Otsego County Board of Representatives, where he carried or chaired, excuse me, the Public Works Committee, served as Vice Chair of the Administration Committee, and was a member of the Human Services Negotiations and Intergovernmental Affairs Committees. Previously, Senator Overacker served as Maryland Town Supervisor and as a town board member. Senator Overacker grew up in a family of sausage makers, working in the family's local market since age eight. He has a long career in product research development and implementation in the food industry business. And in 2007, he, formed Form, he created FormTech Solutions and built it into a successful multi-million dollar business, working with major companies around the world to develop and incorporate new and innovative products and then make them applicable in the ever-growing food industry. Now, Senator Obaraka, we've not met before, but I think you have a head start on all of the other freshman senators because there's a saying something like, laws are like sausages. It is better not to see them being made and you will not shy away from looking at how those laws get made. So welcome. <laughs> Thank you, and, and you are absolutely correct. Although I will say one thing when it comes to that, uh, as, a, as an added uh, statement, I would rather eat a bad sausage than eat a bad law. So we'll leave it at that. <laughs> very good, very good. So Senator Akshar, uh, would you like to get us started with a little opening? Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Dan and Bob, uh, your entire community relations team and everybody who's on the line this evening. It's, uh, it's great to be with you. Uh, it's an honor, uh, quite frankly. Uh, obviously, I wish that we could be in each other's uh, company personally, but I think uh, you know, this is the way of the world right now, and it's the best way that we can keep everyone uh, safe and healthy. So clearly, I, I always look forward to the time that we get to spend uh, in person in Albany, uh, but nonetheless, uh, again, it's just great to see everybody uh, virtually. You know, the team and I, uh, since being elected, have always strongly held the belief that the only way uh, to properly represent uh, our constituency is to listen uh, and to spend time with that constituency so we can properly advocate uh, on your behalf in Albany and at home. And I've learned uh, during my tenure uh, in the state Senate, uh, just how difficult the work uh, that all of you uh, do. And I think I can speak on behalf uh, of both myself and Senator Oberacker uh, in saying that we are here this evening uh, and we've joined you because we have uh, a deep respect and admiration. Uh, and quite frankly, we deeply care about those that have intellectual and developmental disabilities and the people uh, who take care of them. You know, I've said publicly many, many times that as elected leaders, 
we have a moral obligation. It's the most fundamental of obligations to take care of those uh, who are vulnerable in our communities. And I think we can all agree that this year's proposed state budget falls very, very short of that obligation. And it's not just this year's budget. Uh, I would respectfully argue with everyone on the line here uh, that if you look over the course of history, uh, we have many failings uh, when it comes uh, to this particular space. So, you know, over the last couple of months, uh, over the last year, uh, we have received many uh, emails and telephone calls and correspondence about uh, cuts that Racker uh, and others uh, are facing in this proposed budget. And uh, as I said earlier, it's, uh, it's unacceptable. I understand uh, the fiscal issues that we are all faced with uh, this year. I understand that we have a significant deficit, some of which was caused by fiscal mismanagement, some of which was caused by uh, the global pandemic. I understand that the federal government is working very hard uh, to pass a stimulus package. I think what's incredibly important uh, for all of us to remember that uh, regardless of the dollar we get from the federal government, uh, it must supplement the state's responsibility not supplant funding that the state is supposed to be giving uh, to organizations uh, like this one. So um, we've had some small victories, I would say. Uh, if you look at the restoration of uh, the cut that was talked about, that is important, uh, but we are in this fight uh, together. And the fight in my opinion is uh, far from over. Dan, you had mentioned uh, that I'm serving this year on the Senate's Disabilities uh, Committee. And I can tell you unequivocally that um, my service in this committee, uh, it's been the greatest honor of my life. Uh, and I've had the pleasure of serving on other committees that I've been very, very interested in. Um, but specifically when it comes to those with disabilities, uh, you, you have to have people uh, that have a, a passion to do what is right. Uh, and be willing uh, to put in the time and the energy uh, to uh, get people to realize the importance of what it is that we're trying to do. And I would like to think that this particular committee can bridge the political divide that we're so used to uh, in Albany and focus solely on those that we, of course, are there to help. There are certain things, in my humble opinion, that transcend politics and dealing and helping and taking care of those with intellectual and developmental disabilities uh, is one of those things. It doesn't matter if you're a Republican, it doesn't matter if you're a Democrat, you're from upstate or downstate. Uh, what matters is that we find a way to work together, uh, advance policy and advance funding streams that um, take care of uh, those that so desperately need our help. So uh, thanks for giving me a couple of minutes. I hope I didn't go on too long. Uh, to, again, it's a pleasure to be with all of you and uh, looking forward to the conversations that we're going to have this evening. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Senator Akshar, for those uh, warm words, especially about the Com Disabilities Committee. And now, Senator Overacker. How do you follow something like that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, um, I, I have to say as a, as a freshman, you know, legislator here in, in Albany, one of the um, one of the things I'm, I'm in awe of, if you will, is, is looking at some of my um, senior uh, legislators. And, and the, the part is when you're a freshman, you're always following in their footsteps. And, um, you know, Senator Actra brought up so many, so many points. It was almost as if he was reading off of my, my bullet list. And uh, the thing that I'd like to, you know, kind of put forward is, um, especially coming out of COVID, um, there is such a, 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 a higher priority, or there should be more appropriately a higher priority on where we move and how we move to improve our, our mental health. And I can think of nothing better than um, with the job that, that you all do and, and the support that you all do. And, and uh, just the fact that um, um, you, you are such a cohesive uh, group. Um, I can't think of any better way, you know, in, in our business, being a businessman, we talk about ROI, you know, return on investment. I cannot think of a better being a, being a, a legislator in New York at this time and representing the people of the 51st. I cannot think of a better ROI for me than to not only 
look at your funding, keeping it, we should by all means keep it, but we should also look in, in those areas where we're spending our money and reallocate some of that to get this true ROI, a true return on investment. I cannot think of a better opportunity. I cannot think of a better um, uh, revenue stream to use you know, those governmental terms that we use uh, to look at funding. And I, I look at it this way, you know, we have seen here in COVID and especially in Albany uh, and the ability to, to be remote. Um, we haven't seen as, as many uh, of, of uh, legislators, you know, coming in and, and, and that's, that's okay, but just look at the potential savings that we've seen just on expenses alone, if you will. And it just, just, you know, my mind thinks in those terms, you know, potentially take that and look at that and just say, here we are, we haven't, we haven't had uh, uh, the amount of, of that and, and reallocate that and look at that as, as potential uh, areas of funding. I think it would be, I know in my company, you know, when my sales folks aren't out there and, I, and I'm looking at, at our uh, expense reports and things of that nature, uh, those monies then can go into uh, other areas. Another area I like to use in a, a terminology I use is, um, you know, when we're, we're talking about preventive maintenance, I think a lot of what you folks really do would be considered preventive maintenance. And, and where, how do you attach uh, a return on that? It's sometimes difficult to, to, to track and, and for us as legislators to kind of gain around. So part of my job here as well this year is to try to educate some of our legislators on the committees that I sit on. Uh, about that and to think in those terms. And, and wouldn't it be amazing to be able to change some of our, our uh, the way we think here in Albany uh, to, to, to go along that. Now with uh, Senator uh, Exer's help, I don't think there's any doubt that uh, I think the two of us together, uh, I'm the, uh, the ranker on um, uh, alcoholism and, and substance abuse and uh, uh, Senator Baxter is with me on that. I think we can really look at, um, you know, teaming together and, uh, and making a positive impact. So with that, uh, I always loved that my dad gave me a saying, you know, God gave me two ears and one mouth. He really meant for me to listen twice as much as talk. So I'm gonna do that right now. So thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, Senator Overracker. Uh, that's a good thing to remember when you're in conversations with people, that's for sure. Your dad gave you, gave you good advice. Um, I'm going to um, start by asking uh, Emily Papperman, Racker's uh, board president. Uh, she's on here with us to uh, begin with the first question. Emily? Hi, um, Senator Overracker and Senator Akshar. Thank you for, your, for joining us and, for your, and thank you, Dan. Um, my question is, as we're in a pandemic, I, I think it's important for folks that are direct service providers and, and folks with intellectual and developmental disabilities to be able to continue to get the services that they receive. And so I, I don't think that um, the proposed cuts to Medicaid and to the uh, <laughs> disability services should happen, but I do understand that they might. So if they do happen, um, what is your plan to mitigate mitigate things so that um, the folks with intellectual and developmental disabilities and the folks, you know, who are, are supporting them don't, um, don't, aren't catastrophically um, affected uh, by by the cuts, what do you plan to do to mitigate some of the stress? Well, Emily, if I if I might jump in real quick, um, number one, and and uh, I I think I saw a little uh, sigh of relief from Senator Axer when I'm taking this tough one because it, it was a really good question, a very detailed question, and, and I really appreciate it. And I and I even kind of I think started to lay the groundwork for that by simply looking at here in Albany, where we spend our money, you know, as a former 
uh, county legislator and, and town supervisor, when it came to budgets, I always felt like I had the most control over where I spent my money as opposed to trying to find new sources you know, of, uh, of revenue. Uh, as a government, you know, th those sources of, of revenue usually come down to uh, increasing taxes. And, and I've always felt before we went that route, um, I would look at the total picture of where we, you know, spend our monies and then look at uh, reallocating some of those areas uh, to, to, again, areas that I felt like are in need or, or we can actually see some good come of it. You know, one of the other things I think we do in, or we don't do well, I should say, in government is we don't we don't do things that we could um, take a little credit for if you will that are that are good things you know um, and and I feel like your question um, if we look to reallocate some of our our uh, uh, spending monies and in, into support this okay what better way to come back and say look at the good we've done right look at look at something here I can I can hold it I can see it right I you know something that we have really done that is a feel-good moment. And coming out of where we are today with COVID, uh, all the things that are going on here in Albany, man, I'll tell you, that, that would be a win-win. So what I'm gonna do is look for those areas where, where we could reallocate spending and, and, and fund um, basically the, the question that you put before me. So thank you. Thank you, um, sir. Emily, I would just offer this, that uh, in, in line with what Senator Oberacher is saying, right, for me, and I think we share this uh, thought process, this, is, this comes down to wants versus needs, right? I said during the outset that I firmly believe that as elected leaders in this state, that we have a, a very fundamental obligation to, and a moral obligation to take care of those um, that, to your point, have intellectual and developmental disabilities. So, there is, I don't care if the deficit is 6 billion, 15 billion, 20 billion, there's only going to be so much money in the pot, right? Now, the governor and the legislature have very important decisions to make. Uh, to the Senator's point, how are we going to allocate those dollars that we currently have? Um, I'm just looking at my notes here. Uh, the cuts uh, would amount to $335 million this year. Am I, am I accurate in saying that, Dan? Yes, that is correct. I want you all to think about this for just one moment. What the gov so the governor cuts uh, $335 million from all of your budgets, but what he keeps in the budget is a $420 million tax credit for Hollywood millionaire and billionaire producers. It's called the Hollywood Film Tax Credit. Can you imagine that? So what we're saying to all of you is that this is, in terms of, of, of importance, and priorities, we're going to fund the film tax credit at $420 million, uh, but we're going to cut your budget at $335 million. Those are uh, not very good priorities. So Emily, your point is well taken. Uh, you, your, your, your position is very clear. I think it's incumbent upon P, P, uh, folks like Senator Oberacher and I and our colleagues Republicans and Democrats alike, uh, to fight like hell to ensure that those cuts don't happen uh, and that we see a full restoration. Here's what I say to the Hollywood movie producers. Um, pay your taxes. You don't need a tax break. We need to take that $420 million, uh, and give it to uh, the OPWDD community, uh, to those that are taking care of people with intellectual and developmental disabilities and the people who rely uh, on those services uh, because they're, they're too important. Let the millionaires and billionaires pay their fair share so we can ensure that we're fulfilling our moral obligation. Thank you, Senator. <clears throat> Just to add a, a perspective on that. So thank you very much, both of you for that answer. Senator Oberacher, for you in particular, uh, last year and Senator Akshar was uh, a very helpful and instrumental in making it happen, the legislature pushed forward uh, increasing the pay of direct support professionals by uh, 2%. Um, and then in the same year, they're going to cut us by more than that. And somehow the, that math does not add up for me. <laughs> and again, you know, we, we, we look at those things and, and uh, Dan, you, you bring that up, you know, what a, what a great opportunity to say, like I said, take, take a, a victory lap, right? We increased 
you know, the pay, and then we, we go and, and kind of shoot ourselves uh, in the foot with that. It, it, it really is, um, uh, it, it gets frustrating and, and discouraging. Um, but again, um, I, I, I'm, we're going to change things. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm the freshman legislator, right? I'm ready to, to, to go and hit this and, and uh, let, let's really change some things. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm energized. That's great. Thank you. Um, next up, I think uh, Joni Groom has a question for you too. Hi, Senators. Um, thank you for giving me this opportunity to ask a question. And I want to say thank you to Racker for giving me the opportunity to ask a question as well. Um, for the Senators, my name is Joni Groom. I am a CSP, Community Support Professional. Um, I am 61 years old and I live in the city of Ithaca. And I am currently juggling three different jobs in order to um, make a living. Um, and so I think this question has been asked, but I will ask it again because it's so very important. Um, will you advocate for a cost of living increase or a wage increase for a direct support, for direct support staff? And what I would like to add to that is um, we love our jobs. And we love working for Racker and the mission and the absolutely incredible organization that they are. It's, it is very difficult to sustain a living, however, with the wages that we are making. Currently, I'm in a position where I may not need, I may not be able to stay in my job because I can't sustain my home and my living. And I work with children, um, with developmental disabilities. And it, you know, it takes about seven months to really know the kids and to really know what they need and not only take care of them, but support them and then include them in our community. And what happens senators over and over and over again is the turnover of staff. And it's not because they don't care and it's not because they don't love their job and it's not because they don't believe in the mission of Racker, but it's because they need to take care of themselves to maintain a living. So I ask you again, will you advocate for a cost of living increase or a wage increase for direct support staff? Joni, let me uh, start by saying uh, two things. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, that we have to have this conversation uh, and that uh, the very people who are charged with uh, taking care of those uh, with disabilities uh, have failed you. And I'm talking about the very government in which I serve. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, you and others like you are unsung heroes. You, you, you are. Um, the, the job that you do, and I, I know without a shadow of a doubt that um, you don't do the job to get rich. Uh, you do the job because you love the people uh, that you're serving. And uh, Dan and Bob can tell you this. Uh, my record uh, speaks for itself in this area. I promise you that I will go horse again, uh, ensuring that uh, my friends across the aisle who are currently in charge of uh, the budget process uh, reject the deferral uh, of the cost of living increase uh, and that we do our very best to allocate state funding to pay a good wage. So you don't have to work three jobs. Uh, so you don't have to search for another job uh, so you can take care of yourself. I mean, just on a very personal note, uh, I can't imagine the emotions that people like you go through in just having to consider leaving the very thing uh, that it is you love so much uh, and, and leaving the people that you're charged with taking care of, right? So there's that emotional piece on your end that I recognize that I, I I pretend to understand. I mean, I, I, I'm not in your shoes, but I, 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 I have a sense of what it is that you're feeling. And then I can't help but think about the, 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 the young men and women that you're serving that come to know you, Joni, as the person who takes care of them. But then you're, you're, you're tasked with having to make this uh, very, very difficult decision, right, about taking care of yourself. So you ask Dan or you ask Bob, I promise you, and I know I'm speaking for Senator Oberacker now, 
uh, that uh, our entire conference uh, will proudly stand up with you um, and ensure that we do our part uh, to, to not only keep you whole, but to, to make you whole. You know, as a, uh, Johnny, as a businessman, um, when, when we find uh, an individual that number one is passionate, um, uh, that you've expressed to me already, I could, I could see that, you know, when you were actually talking about it, I, you know, your, your face was flush. I mean, you were, you were that um, energized and, and, and passionate about your position. So when, when I, as, a, as an owner of a company, have, have an employee or somebody who is that passionate about what they're, what they're doing in their life, I mean, uh, I don't see that very often. You know, I, I, I see folks that are there just to have a job, you know, and, and just to go through that. So when I see this, uh, this, this energy that you are, are projecting out, um, it makes me so much easier to go and be your advocate and to say the same as, as Senator Axer just, just basically laid out. We need to get people like you who, who uh, want to do this to be able to do that. I mean, we're, we're taking care of you as, as, a, as a constituent. We're taking care of the, 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 uh, you know, the residents that you, in essence, take care of and build that relationship with. You know, again, when I was in Otsego County, you know, we used to have a, kind of a lot of turnover. And um, it was because we didn't pay as well as some of the other uh, areas out there. So we would go and train somebody, uh, spend all that money, time, effort in training, and then off they would go in, in other areas. And, and I think we, uh, and, and I mean we as, as both uh, uh, Senator Axer and myself, uh, and, and as the government, we're the ones who are losing, uh, you know, investing in, in, in what you do. So. Again, I'm, it's a long drawn out answer, but I am going to be an advocate for that as well. Uh, I, I can think of nothing more than to get you a wage where you can uh, live, uh, you know, adequately, I guess would be the word. I, I, I mean, I, I can't think of anything else. Uh, you know, we're, we're not talking about like a luxury type thing. We're just talking live adequately, live in, in, in the, 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 the job that you have this passion for. And again, you know, I, I keep going back to this. I think uh, Senator Axer and myself, we could then take and say, man, look at, look at what we've done, right? This is, we, we've actually taken a, a situation that was um, negative in, in nature. We, we've in, applied some funds to it. You know, I mean, like, like there was some magical thing, applying some funds to it and actually look at the good that it's produced. So um, yes, I would be an advocate for you to, uh, to, to support that position. Fantastic. Thank you uh, both senators for that commitment. Um, it's absolutely needed. Um, you know, the direct support professionals uh, wage um, in our organization, the highest that we can start people at right now is $13 an hour based on the funding that we get. The um, wage, for example, if you want to go uh, work for a fast food uh, organization is already at 15. Um, and those two dollars, which over a year is probably about four thousand dollars in income from somebody, is uh, seriously important. Uh, important on that level of um, income, and they may want to work for our organization, uh, but they also have to be able to put food on the table, pay their rent, pay their telephone bill. So, thank you so much for that commitment. And uh, next up, Senator Akshar is a friend of yours, Christian. Hi. Um, hey, pal. Hi, Fred. Uh, in the past, I have had quite a few different things through Racker. And things that have happened have been pretty significant for me. My staff, I've had a couple, most. A few of them, if not most of them, the reason why they didn't stay with me was because of the amount they were getting paid. It unfortunately wasn't enough for what they needed to support their family. And when you think of something or a job to support family, 
do you think of flipping burgers or do you think of actually helping people? That's one thing I'd like to say, first of all. Also, it wouldn't have been possible for me to do anything if it weren't for this organization that has helped me so much, Cracker, because, well, They've helped me get through my social awkwardness by helping me go to different places that I never would have been able to find or get to on my own. And they all had places that had people that were similar to me that I felt comfortable talking to. It's helped me a lot. And, you know, we just are really thankful for everything that Racker has been able to do and everything that my staff have helped me achieve. Okay. And so the question that goes along with Christian's narrative, I'm very proud of you, buddy. Thanks for sharing that. Um, is first of all, we definitely appreciate all of the advocacy um, and recognize the seat that you hold in the Senate's Disability Committee. We're thrilled to hear that you're a part of that. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the specific actions that you'll take as our representatives to advocate for the things that we're discussing tonight and how you're gonna motivate other representatives to support your efforts? I think it's a great question. Um, so thank you for it. And um, I, I would say my service on this particular committee uh, will be driven by people like you uh, and Dan uh, and the entire team at, Rock, uh, at, at Rackers and Christian. I mean, the narrative that we just heard, right? And, uh, when I was speaking uh, to Joni in reference to her, um, her question, I think Christian did a beautiful job of summing up what it is that I was trying to explain in terms of that relationship that you see between uh, a young man like Christian and the person uh, that uh, is taking care of Christian. So for me specifically, as I've done throughout my entire tenure, um, I don't live in the world in which you're currently living, right? Um, I don't, I'm, I'm not a foremost expert uh, in this particular area. What I am uh, is a blessed elected official uh, who has always pledged to the people uh, to be a very loud and energetic voice. <laughs> and so as I've done previously in the past, uh, I will take all of my direction from folks like you. Um, I will always be honest and candid. Um, I, I've, I've had this conversation with Dan and Bob a, a number of times throughout my tenure. You know, in Albany, you can't come to Albany and say, I want to change 12 things, right? Because it just won't happen in a legislative session. It won't, right? So I've had this conversation many times by saying, what is the top one or two priorities? What can we collectively get accomplished this year, right? And just on the wage issue, if I may, um, the whole be fair to direct care, right? That, that whole effort, that was the greatest grassroot effort I have ever witnessed in my entire being on the face of this earth. Uh, that, wasn't, that wasn't elected officials. Uh, that was people like everybody on the line, like Dan, like Bob, their entire teams, all speaking in one voice about one thing that was incredibly important to them. That never gets done unless people like you stand up uh, and insist, insist that your elected leaders listen to you. So, um, my commitment to you is to be that loud and energetic voice, right? Uh, that, that person who has a willingness uh, to listen to the needs, uh, prioritize those needs, and then find a way forward. As I said, again, during the outset, this space, right, that we're talking about tonight, this transcends politics. It doesn't matter, again, if you're from Brooklyn or Binghamton. It doesn't matter if you have an R or a D next to your name. It, this, is, this is just, at a very, very basic level, uh, this is what, this is what, humans, not just elected leaders. This is what people, white, black, yellow, red, rich, poor, this is what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to take care of one another. So that's my commitment to you. Thumbs up. I would uh, do a, probably the shortest political answer you'll ever hear uh, right <laughs> now. 
Um, and, and Kristen, you did an excellent job, by the way. I mean, it, you really, uh, um, as, as Senator Axler said, you really brought it home um, in, in a very poignant way. So um, I would put it this way. If, if not Mr. Or, uh, Senator Axler and myself, then who? And if not now, then when? Those two things really come through. And, and with Senator Axler's help, uh, kind of maybe taking me a little bit under his wing here in Albany and, and, and helping me to, to navigate, you know, th that field. I absolutely agree. I think that the two of us working together in tandem would, is, are going to make a, a force and, and actually, as, as he said, focus in on a couple of high priorities. And um, like I said, I mean, all the way through Emily, uh, Joanne and Kristen so far, you guys have been just, I mean, if I, if I had uh, some sales opening, I'd hire you guys as my salesman because you really, you really did sell it. So I want to thank you. You, you, awesome job, awesome job. Thank, thank you, you guys. Um, next up is uh, Honan, and she'll tell a little bit about herself. To be fair, it's not really my first time talking. Maybe or, or well. Can Honan be on not my first time talking to government officials, as you may have already guessed? <laughs> Christian, you're a rock star, baby. I mean, every anybody who knows you knows that you're a rock star. It's it's perfectly fine. Uh, and you should feel very, very I, I, I note I jotted myself a note here. Excuse me, Honan. I, I'll be done in just one second. You mentioned uh, you felt awkward, right? I'm here to tell you without a shadow of a doubt unequivocally, there is nothing, nothing awkward about you. Nothing, nothing. And you should be taking all the credit in the world like you are because uh, you do a great job when you talk to elected officials. I'm sorry I, I, I took up your time. No oh, thank you, Christian. That, that, um, that's my, my comment as well. And I have, um, I have a child, I have a son. I don't know how old you are, Christian. I have a 21 year old son who cannot speak. So I'm so grateful. I, I, such an eloquent, articulate young man like you, who's a member of the community. I'm so proud of you and so thankful for having you as a member of our community. Thank you, Dan, um, for organizing this and for giving me the opportunity to ask a question, share comments. And thank you both Senator Aksher and uh, uh, Oberracker for um, your truly listening um, among this room of beautiful souls. This is really for, uh, refreshing. You are a very positive and energetic uh, response to the need uh, that you are hearing in this room. This is very, re very refreshing for us and really gratifying too, to hear our elected officials being true believers to a cause that we share here. I am, um, my name is on the screen. <laughs> I am a, a parent. Uh, I have a 21 year old nonverbal autistic child who's very low on the spectrum in terms of his um, um, socially accessible skills. Uh, I know how brilliant he is, but uh, it, and the members of this community knows, but in, in the anti world, not recognizable. And our family has been served by the Racker Center since my son was a toddler. And he has now lived in one of our residential group homes for close to 10 years. I am a full-time working mother. I, uh, prior to COVID, and as soon as I get my vaccine and I get my uh, border crossing card ca carrying uh, vaccinated uh, credentials ready, I'll be off on the road again. I could not hold a job and earn my own retirement pension living, uh, my own retirement without these people in this room. They are not just supporting my child. They're supporting people like me, the parents, I couldn't hold a job, live the life, live my dream. I'm an immigrant, live my American dream without the people in this room. And over the years, close to 20 years, I've seen people, I, when I started, first started working with the Rocker Center, I thought our, I don't know if you guys remember, was there a time where my lying? when our folks earned $7.99 or seven something, $7 something an hour. And now it's like double that, a beautiful full $13. <laughs> 
And sometimes we've lived through many crises with our teams, especially the residential home. And I've seen our people on $13 an hour working investment banking hours around the clock, day, day shift that goes to night shift. It's like the COVID lockdown, like day and night knows no beginning and end. And they're the magic for it. Like my son, he's pretty challenging, uh, has behavior issues every now and then. We've uh, problem solved, lived through many crises together. But the only reason, and I, I am not exaggerating, the only reason a parent like me could hold a job, could sleep, is because of the magic in this room. And they get paid $13 an hour. And we, every time I get an email from Dan, I send it to all the people, you know, uh, the listeners I'm on, I say, let's call our legis you know, uh, legislators, let's call our officials. But somehow that just not, it does not feel like we've done enough because changes have not taken place yet. And the revolving door issue that Jody mentioned just now, that, that means safety and well-being for my child. To have a professional, it doesn't take somebody who has a PhD, but it has takes somebody who has that heart of gold and that compassion and that commitment, that dedication and that on the job training to be able to support young people like my son effectively. And you see those people go in and out of the revolving door. Every time when we have staff transitions, I know that because it shows in my son's self-interest behavior, in his loss of appetite, in his severe erosive, you know, uh, ulcers in his esophagus, it manifests itself in the way he cannot keep himself safe or the people around him safe. This is life and death safety issue that you really can create a legacy. Your, it, this could be your political legacy. So um, we really appreciate your conviction, um, your commitment. The question is, comes budget season, I can circulate Dan's email to four Cornell University email listservs. And I've done that years in, year out, but we have not seen things happen yet. So we feel like, well, as a parent, as a co-advocate, I don't feel I have done enough. My question is, comes budget season, what can we as members of the community do to be that wind beneath your wings to help you be successful in creating your political legacy making sure the people in this room supporting our child, making our life possible, can bring food to their family's table. And they don't have to work investment banking hours at $13 an hour. Uh, so what, can, what more can we do to help you be successful in your job, in your conviction, and help you build that allyship you need around the table so change, true change can happen? Thank you so much. I'm sorry, I, I took up so much time. <laughs> uh, don't don't be sorry. Uh, Senator, do you wanna go first? I have some thoughts, but uh, go ahead. Well, thank you, Senator. Um, and again, you know, what, what, what comes through, but, but, but absolute sheer passion. Um, uh, that's, that's the start of it. I mean, you've communicated to, to uh, two senators, um, your, your, your story, your situation, and your passion, your, your, your you know, uh, that's what gets us energized. That, that's what, you know, um, gives me the energy to, to fight. I mean, I think Senator Asher and myself, um, you have to have a little bit of a fighter in you, you know, and, and to be that advocate, to, to, come up, to come up here to Albany and to say, you know, uh, look, I'm, I'm blessed, as Senator Asher uh, alluded to too, I'm, I'm blessed. I have been blessed uh, all through my, my life uh, with, with uh, uh, you know, I, we, everybody goes through some, some trying times. I, I was very fortunate to be able uh, to come out of that and, and to be where I am. And so part of me, you know, is, is there's a time to give that back and, and to uh, plant that seed and, and hope that that uh, comes forward. And, and you have brought that forward again to me. You ask what you, ha uh, what you could do. You have done it. You planted the seed. You have started 
um, me um, on a path that I hope uh, um, I'll have years to, to uh, cultivate up here in Albany. And, um, and, and like you say, something that we can literally hang our hat on and say, look at what we did. Look at, can we imagine New York, uh, New York State with all the other things that are going on, right? And, and as Senator Axelrod knows, there's, there's a bunch of them, right? Wouldn't it be amazing just to be able to say, look at, look at this, this one thing, just this one thing, and look at what we did. We, we, we focused our attention, we focused our energies, we focused our, our abilities, and, and look at what we were able to accomplish. And you know, I, I've been hearing this a lot from everybody and everyone says, thank you. Well, you know what? My dad had a saying, you don't have to say thank you for doing what's right. And, and basically this just breaks down to it's what's right. Yeah, and on that point, right? Doing what's right is easy. It's, it should always be easy to do what's right. And you know, you said, what can we do? Dan, I, I, think, we should, um, uh, I think we should bring uh, Hung in, uh, to Albany with us uh, because uh, you know, you, you hear the fight uh, in her voice, you hear the passion in her voice, and we have to get others uh, to recognize uh, that this issue is far too important. You know, I, I'm going to be honest with all of you on the line. I'm angry that we're still having this conversation um, because we shouldn't be. It's really, it, it's, it's, it's that simple. It's that easy to do. Uh, we should not even be uh, finding ourselves in a position uh, to have this uh, ha find ourselves having this conversation. I think the next very critical juncture for all of us, everybody on the line tonight, is to see what the one house budgets look like. And by that, I mean, for those of you that don't know, uh, the, the, the executive, the governor has already submitted his financial plan. Uh, now, uh, the majorities in both houses, of the legislature will submit their one house budget, uh, meaning what are the priorities of the Senate Democrats? What are the priorities of the Assembly Democrats? And we really need to see those documents. Do they reject outright the $335 million in cuts that the governor is suggesting uh, we move forward with? I certainly hope so. Uh, and if, um, if they haven't, I can promise you Senator Mannion, uh, the chairman of the Disabilities Community, uh, excuse me, committee, is gonna have a fight on his hands. Uh, and that's really when we need to, uh, you know, step it up uh, and go into high gear and start to really rise up right with that collective voice like we saw with uh, the Be Fair to Direct Care initiative. Thank you, Hannah, and thank you, Senators, for that uh, answer. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm going to ask, I think probably what will be the last question for uh, this legislative forum. It's a combination of things that have been uh, coming through in the chat that Chris Donovan, Donovan nicely summarized for me. Um, one of the things that we run to run into as an organization across all of our different programs, whether it's people we're supporting in homes, our work that we're doing in school districts on mental health, in our preschool programs, or uh, in the work that we do in the community with um, occupational therapy, speech therapy, physical therapy, is uh, a lot of bureaucracy. And the bureaucracy limits the flow of funding to the people who need it most. Things like multiple hopes to jump through and redundancy across the continuum of care, what work can be, and I wanna know and the, from the chat was what work can be done to remove all the hoops and delays to meet the needs of people with disabilities in our community. You know, one of the things I, I was noticing, uh, Dan, uh, in, in my very short time here is, um, uh, and, and as a former supervisor, I, I kind of equate this to uh, the mandates, you know, that, that um, tend to be a, a, a top-down version, right? A, a way of uh, managing, if you will, from a top-down, you know, perspective. And I, I, I'll always remember a couple of times as, as being a supervisor and having them come, you know, from Albany and just being like, man, th these guys just don't, they don't have, you know, they don't really have uh, uh, any idea what, what that means to us. Uh, both financially, both, uh, you know, uh, structurally, or what it takes to implement it and, and those things. And uh, I always said almost, well, I did say it before I got here. I was like, I, I thought it was on purpose. It was, it was designed that way to, you know, create this, um, this system so that when you try to work it from the bottom, from the bottom up, um, you're, you're met with these, you know, 
roadblocks and, and to prevent you from actually uh, getting it. Uh, I ran on I ran on on a uh, position of saying you know we really do need to to work on that concept. I mean on on these mandates being just pushed down. Uh, I felt as though um, communication is a, is another key area. You know we don't uh, we don't really communicate. Uh, our office in, in a very short time has been getting a lot of inquiries on on a multitude of. of uh, of issues and, and one of the things that they keep coming back with is I'm not reaching anybody, I can't talk to anybody. Uh, there's a frustration. I had uh, uh, two constituents today just bringing up their, you know. So so there's a lot in there. there there's a lot, uh, you know, working there. Uh, my, my business sense, you know, drawing a point, uh, an X here and an X here in a straight line would be communication is key. Uh, uh, my job is to find out where to go to get those answers. Um, my job is then to get those answers and communicate it back in a, in a street, um, you know, not, not a, a very uh, layman, if you want to use layman based uh, language so that uh, they can, it can be understood. And, and again, to try to um, eliminate that, that type of concept that, you know, we have to have uh, uh, all these mandates and all the, you know, uh, you have to have another bill, you know, or, or the one I always liked is this, right? We have to have a meeting to understand why we have so many meetings, so then to stop having so many meetings. I mean, it's kind of that, you know, scenario that, that I really think government has is, is, is found itself in. But, uh, you know, I, I will say this, and I, and I am so encouraged and I am absolutely, uh, um, it, it's such a pleasure to have Senator Aksher as, as, a, as an advocate for me uh, in, in the district and in, in there. And again, I keep going back to, I know he's gonna get probably sick and tired of maybe taking me under his wing, but I mean, you know, there's so much knowledge there. There's so much experience there. Uh, that's what I'm looking to actually ascertain as well is, is, is finding out, you know, you know, uh, Senator, I, I have this issue weird and, and he can get me there in such, in such a, a short period of time. So um, I'm going to take what is successful and Senator Aksha, I'm going to copy that uh, as I did, or I plan to do as with Jim, Jim Seward, who was at absolutely a, um, an unbelievable senator for, for 34 years, and uh, hopefully, um, maybe make a little twist onto it. You know, to add my own little flavor, if you will, to it, uh, Dan. But um, I really would like to see us just think more in direct terms. You know, especially when it comes to communication. So, Dan, I think you know you raised the issue of of you know issues being marred in bureaucracy. And uh, oftentimes, uh, really, that, that it's, it's that very bureaucracy that stops uh, us from achieving tangible results in all that we do, right? Um, so I think one thing that, uh, you know, Rocker and, and others like you need to be very conscious of is uh, the Senate Bill 5084A. 5084A. There's, there's a movement afoot to take OASIS, OMH, in OPWDD and make them one organization. Now, I have concerns with that. And of course, I would take my direction from folks like you. But if we can't, I, I talked a lot tonight about government's obligations, right? And, and our responsibilities. And if we, we've not yet met those obligations and responsibilities, when we have separate state agencies that are supposed to provide mental health services, substance use disorder services, developmental disability services. What is going to happen when we combine those three organizations? Um, and are we to expect now that, that we're going to get better when we've grown that bureaucracy by three or four or five times? Um, I have serious concerns about that. Uh, the bill was on uh, the Alcoholism and Substance Abuse uh, Committee, as, as Senator Oberacher knows, uh, last week. Uh, it was pulled at the very last minute, which I think uh, is a good thing, uh, because I really think that uh, before we have any conversations about that, uh, you know, if if uh, the, the 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 chairman expect my support, someone is going to have to articulate in very very clear terms how it is that we, as a, the state of New York, uh, by doing this, are going to be better at providing the services. Uh, that we're supposed to be doing. And if nobody can uh, articulate that, uh, then I'm certainly not going to support that because I think it has um, the potential 
to go in the wrong direction. And we have for far too long uh, been doing the wrong thing. Yeah, thank you so much, senators, for those answers. Um, let's see, we only have about two minutes left. We have one question on vaccine, which probably we can't complete in getting answers in two minutes. So I was wondering if you would be okay if we went slightly over and have one final question, that's okay. Yep, so fine. one of the questions, uh, one of the things that's happened that's been really cool on the vaccine front is that uh, our staff are in the very beginning of being able to get the vaccine. So the, the people that they're working with um, are gonna be safe. People with disabilities um, have a mortality rate that's running somewhere between 1.8 and 2.2 times the general population. So this is really important. Um, and now they've moved and made uh, individuals living in the community eligible to receive the vaccine that have disabilities, but they have not, the Department of Health has not added the families the, that are taking care of those individuals to the list of people that are eligible for the vaccine, which seems uh, slightly counterintuitive in terms of keeping them safe. And um, how can we try to address that? Uh you know, in, 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 and again, I hate to keep going back to and beating this horse about a business sense, but, you know, we, we do a lot of work with the national accounts. And I made the comment a long time ago. I said, you know, if we were to take a, a, a little bit different attitude like this, we should have incorporated McDonald's into this process. And I'll tell you why. Um, as, as when we roll products out and, and having worked with McDonald's, who, who do, they do things not only worldwide, of course, but, you know, here in North America. I mean, I don't think you could almost find a better, other than maybe the U.S. Army, to be honest with you, um, I don't think you can find a better uh, materials management concept than those folks. I mean, they they ha have everything right down to the nth degree. And and so, um, unfortunately, uh, and, and I'm not usually one to point fingers and because and, it's always easy to armchair quarterback, um, but at, at some point in, 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 in New York's process, we would have thought that we're gonna to get to a point where we have to distribute vaccines. Um, there should have been a, 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 a well thought out distribution plan in place. Uh, in my opinion, there was not. Um, I had an opportunity to uh, ask uh, Commissioner Zucker about that. Uh, I said, my 51st district is a vaccine desert. I, I don't see uh, distribution sites. I, I don't see product. Um, what am I supposed to tell my, my constituents? And, and there really was not uh, uh, even a viable answer that was, that was given back to me. I then asked, I then submitted my plan to him, which again, you know, uh, not only am I pointing out the inadequacies, but I'm also offering a solution. And um, uh, it, was, it was listened to, but I think that's as far as it went. But, but where I was going with, and, and I agree with you. I mean, we, 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 we had a very, inadequate um, plan in place. Um, it allows for, for, again, the pointing of fingers. Uh, anytime I think something like uh, Commissioner uh, Zucker was asked, it's the federal government's issue and, and you know not ours. Wouldn't it be refreshing if somebody said, you know what, for once we didn't do it right, but we're working towards and here's our plan. I still haven't heard what, really where the plan is. It's, it's a shotgun approach. Um, uh, we have probably uh, at least 60% of the calls we get right now are, are due to vaccine related issues. And um, um, I would hope that we would learn from this. I would hope that now we would be able to go back and say, you know, when we debrief ourselves, right, what did we do and what didn't we do well and, and put a better plan in place. But Dan, you're, you're right. I mean, to be able to um, uh, take care of one of our most vulnerable um, segments. Um, I wish I had a better answer other than to point out that um, uh, unfortunately it just was not a, a well rolled out uh, uh, plan. Dan, I, I think what we could do in the immediacy uh, of, on the issue is, uh, I don't want to speak for Senator Oberacher, or I'm, I'm guessing he'll, he'll agree here, but uh, why don't, uh, I know Benji Fetterman from my staff is on the line, why don't we pen a letter to uh, Commissioner Zucker and Kastner uh, in relation to this particular issue uh, and, you know, uh, very politely uh, suggest that uh, they open this up uh, for family members of those um, that are dealing with um, intellectual and developmental disabilities. We can, 
we can put that uh, together uh, tomorrow and get it over Senator Oberacker, and then uh, we'll get you a copy of that uh, when we send it off. Great idea. Um, I think, you know, doing some wording like uh, um, family caregivers, because caregivers is in the essential. If we can just say family caregivers should be part of the essential group, boom, done. Yep, we're, we're happy to do that. And um, Benji is coming to Albany with me tomorrow. Uh, he's got lots to do, and uh, we just gave him something else to do, but uh, I know he'll happily do it. So. <laughs> Thank you very much. And senators, uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us tonight. Uh, as Honan said, you have listened um, sensitively and nicely. And then the other thing I wanted to mention is that um, you haven't just given us platitudes. You said you're going to take action. And we very, very much appreciate that. And thank you so much for your support and for joining us uh, during the evening today. Great forum. Thank you. I appreciate the, uh, the invite. Dan. And thanks, thanks uh, for all that you do as well. I mean, uh, just a, a, a remarkable organization uh, that you are in charge of uh, with just loving and dedicated uh, people who are doing God's work. And um, really just uh, on behalf of the people that I represent, but more importantly, just from, from my core, uh, I say thank you. And thank you is not enough. Uh, and again, as I said earlier, I'm, I'm, I'm angry uh, and I'm sorry that we're still having these conversations because doing what's right is easy uh, and we've not yet done that uh, but nonetheless uh, we live to fight another day and, and that's what you can count on us to do thank you so much thanks god bless you all thank you thank you all for joining us have a great evening